Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. First of all, I would like to bring to all of you warm greetings from the Philippines. Greetings from the Philippines. Wow. I thought I would be giving a catechesis in a church. But this is a church. This is the church. The living church. Here. Before I start my formal sharing, which will be informal, I tell you, uh, may I know who among you are really and truly young? And who among you are pretending to be young? <laughs> How many of us here are young at heart? Wow, wow, so all of us. Wow, good, good, good. Now, The theme of today's catechesis is let us allow ourselves to be touched by God's mercy. And I would like to start by asking the Lord, Lord, open my lips. Lord, open our hearts. from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 to 10. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the lost coin. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. O oh Lord, open my lips. O oh Lord, open our hearts. The parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin is presented to us by the organizers of the Days of Catechesis as the starting point for today's reflection. 
the theme, as I said earlier, is let us allow ourselves to be touched by God's mercy. At first glance, at first hearing, the theme sounds, well, questionable. I was asking myself, if you are the lost sheep, if you are the lost coin, would you not welcome someone who wants to take you home? Why do we need a topic like this? Let us open ourselves, let us allow ourselves to be touched by God's mercy. Can we not just presume that everyone here is open enough to be touched by God's mercy? On second thought, and upon looking at my own experience, I have to say, we need this topic because we often do not allow God to touch us. The lost sheep. Why will a sheep get lost? According to some scholars, a lost sheep could either be wounded or sick or plainly dumb. The 99 are going that way, you go this way. Oh, well, you are dumb. <laughs> the teacher says, raise your right hand, and you raise <laughs> two feet. Well, okay, you're lost. I guess all of us here could recall an instance in our lives where we could say, I am that lost sheep. Or a lost coin, maybe misplaced, maybe carelessly thrown on the chair or somewhere. Sometimes you feel you're in the wrong place. You don't belong. And you ask, should I be here? Maybe I should be replaced by a better coin. Yes, lost sheep, lost coin. But if you are lost, you would want to be found. But how come the theme tells us it is possible that even if you're lost, you would not welcome the one who tries to find you? My dear young people, today we are being invited with the help of God's grace to open ourselves to be touched by God's mercy, and not to be afraid to open ourselves, for the one who comes to touch us is a merciful God. But let us reflect on what are the possible causes of the closing of our hearts. Why is it possible for us to say no? Leave me alone. I don't need your mercy. Are there parents here? Are there parents here, guardians? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Huh. And I guess this session is also for you. How are we forming our children, our young people? Are we forming them to be open, to be touched by God's mercy? I'll give you a few uh, 
phenomena in our time, in our world. Nowadays, everyone wants to be successful. Success is the goal of life. You need to be an achiever. And the more you achieve, your self-worth goes higher. In fact, even in church, my being a cardinal, some people say to me, wow, you have achieved so much. Everything is measured according to achievement, success. When I was newly ordained as a deacon, and I would go to some village chapels in the Philippines, nobody wanted to come with me. Nobody. No altar server, no choir member, no. You are just a deacon. So go by yourself. <laughs> then I got ordained a priest. Wow. And so many volunteers among the altar boys. Father, may I serve at your mass? And then so many not so young and some young people said, we will sing at your Mass. Of course, they want to be with Father. <laughs> and they also will enjoy the lunch or snack that is given to Father. You know? <laughs> and then I became a bishop. Wow. <laughs> Everyone in the town says, You are my nephew. <laughs> You are my relative, okay? And uh, they say, your achievement is our common achievement. <laughs> and now... So when I say, I'm from the Philippines, all the Filipinos say, ah! ah! Everyone says, I know him. <laughs> Just yesterday, I said, oh, eminence. So I said, yes. Oh, I said, oh, are you enjoying? I said, he said, yes, of course, I am. And then he said, how is Korea? <laughs> I'm not from Korea. <laughs> I'm from the Philippines. But they see this red sash, this red cap, and they say, I want to be close to him. His achievement is my achievement. Our world is measuring human beings by our achievement. And very often, we measure ourselves by that. What have I achieved? And to be successful, you don't tolerate failure. The greatest sin of our time is to say, I have failed. And it is a no-no to say, I cannot do it. We always convince ourselves, you can be what you want to be. And do it by yourself. Because if you allow others to help you, to guide you, or to do it for you, you do not qualify as successful. And so, in our libraries, you have a lot of books. Self-help books. You can fix the faucet by yourself. Huh? You can construct your apartment by yourself. Everything self-help so that I can be a self-made human being. And it is an insult to me if I say somebody else made me who I am. And so I protect myself, but I'm actually protecting my pride. I don't need anyone 
I can handle this. And I deny my wounds. I deny my being lost. It is embarrassing. I will lose my dignity. So leave me alone and let it be this way. I will do it my way. Those of my generation know that song. <laughs> Sample? Oh, no, 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 no. Nobody told me to sing, so I will recite it. They, the, the song says, and now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friends, I'll state it clear. I state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every byway, but more. Much more than this, I did it my way. The clock says I should stop talking now. But yes, we are all victims of this mistaken notion of human dignity, of human worth, where we say, leave me alone. I am okay. I don't need any help. The song continues. Regrets? I have a few. But then again, too few to mention. I've I've forgotten the next line. <laughs> I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew, but through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all and I stood tall and did it my way. Now that, that person will not allow anyone, even God, to touch his heart, her heart, for it is an insult. But you know, dear brothers and sisters, if we deny our wounds, we will inflict wounds on others. Let me repeat that. If we do not face our wounds, if we live in an illusion that I don't have any scars, I don't have any needs, I will be harsh on other people. I will lose compassion. And we don't want that. How can we be compassionate to other people? Know that we need to be found. We need to be carried on the shoulders of someone who cares for us, someone who will leave the 99, someone who will sweep the whole house in search of you. And then when we ask the shepherd, you had 99 healthy sheep. Why? Why did you look for a sick, wounded, or dumb sheep. Why? You have nine other coins. Why sweep the whole house for this one useless coin? 
And you know what the shepherd will say? What the woman who swept the house said? Yes, you may be a wounded sheep. You may be a lost, useless coin. But you are mine. You are mine. You belong to me. You don't have to prove. You don't have to earn my love. You are mine. You may be wounded. You may be scarred. You may be lost. You may be limping. But here I am. I will carry you home. If you cannot come home by yourself, I will walk for you simply because you are mine. No other shepherd will be able to say that. And no other woman could say that to the lost coin. But God could say, you are mine. Have no fear. I know who you are. And your wounds, your sins, can never diminish your worth for me.